Hello everyone, this is going to be a hopefully beginner friendly tutorial that is just going to cover creating a little bit of a feedback loop where when the user clicks on a button, the server updates something and then the user's page gets updated with that information. So this is not going to update everyone's page, so we're not doing any sort of like turbo broadcasts to the entire system through a Redis database. This is just going to be for example, if I click like a, a counter button, it goes to the server. Server says, okay, it's counter plus one. Uh, and then the user sees that the counter goes up by one. But if anyone else is looking at the page, the counter will stay the same until they refresh. Uh, this is pretty popular for stuff like if you're upvoting comments or upvoting videos on YouTube. Of course, they don't want every single upvote to get broadcast to everyone. They wait until you just load the page and then they show you what the most recent count is. So that's sort of the use case here. Or you can even think of it like if you're uh, typing in a search bar, uh, not everyone's search bar needs to be updated, only the one person who's searching, but you wanna pull those results from the server, for example. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create some devise users just so that we have something really simple to work with. So we're just gonna do a bundle add devise. This way we can add the counter to the user and then we can just show you that like one user sees the updates while the rest don't. So now we have devise, let's do a rails g devise colon install command. And then we can do a rails g devise user command to generate our user accounts. Next, we need to do a migration where we say add counter to user. And this could of course be like upvotes or whatever you need. Uh, we just need to make sure it is an integer and make sure we spell that right. Uh, except it needs to be counter colon integer Sorry, once again, it is very early in the morning. Okay, so that is now done, uh, but I forgot to set this to a default and uh, let's make sure we don't do that again. So we, we're gonna come into our add counter. At the end here, we're just gonna say this needs to be a default of zero. That way we can do a plus equals one. Uh, otherwise we'll run into some nil errors. Okay, so that's good. Let's do our Rails DB. Oops, let me hit F11 so you can actually read this. Rails DB colon migrate. And that should migrate our database. So let's do a Rails G controller pages home. This will just create our home action, of course, in our pages controller, which we can then use. And now we can type Rails S to start our server. We come over to localhost port 3000, we'll see an empty page. Kind of boring, but that's okay. Let's come over to our explorer into config and our routes.rb file. And then I'll hit control B to hide the side panel. Now in here, what I wanna do is grab this git, change it to a root, grab this slash and change it to a hash. We're going from a git pages slash home to a root. So that's gonna set the root page when we go to localhost port 3000 and then pages hash home or pages pound a home or whatever you wanna call it is just saying it's the pages controller and the home action by default. So if we do this, we come over here, we refresh, we now see the pages uh, home page. Okay, so that's pretty neat. But now let's go ahead and let's add in another action for our counter. So here's what my thought is. We'll come into our app, our views, our pages, and our home page. And the reason why we're coming into here first is because I feel like this might be a good way to sort of outline what we need to do. This is going to be two parts. The first part is going to be the link to the update counter. And this will go to our, uh, we'll just call it our update counter path. So this is part one, which is the action we're gonna take. And then we need to see what this action is going to update. So in this case, what we can do is we can say render pages slash counter, which is gonna be a partial. Uh, and for now, we'll just leave it like this. We'll come over here and we'll create this partial inside of our pages folder, new file, underscore, we called it counter.html.erb. Inside of this counter, all we wanna do, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this because you probably don't care, is we just wanna print out a variable called counter. Now, we could do something like current underscore user dot counter, but the, the issue with this is we'll run into some problems when uh, we try to broadcast any changes because Rails and Devise really don't play well with all of this turbo stuff uh, if it's done with the current user context. So just to be on the safe side, I generally just try and keep the current user completely out of this and I just go with a variable. Now, of course, if we come up here, we can just pass in that variable. So we can just do a comma 
and then we'll just say let's pass in a current underscore user dot counter current user comes from device counter is the thing we made earlier now we do need to make sure that uh oops probably want to do counter colon current user uh, we do want to make sure that we are logged in otherwise this will throw an error so if we come over here right now uh, we'll get two errors one will be for this path so let's go ahead and let's add the path first we'll come into our routes and i guess right above the root we'll just do a get for the update underscore counter now we need to tell it where this goes it's going to go to the uh, pages controller with the update counter action and then we're going to say this needs to happen as update underscore counter and then we can grab this because we don't have this defined yet so you're probably probably wondering where this is coming from uh, but because we're saying inside the pages controller let's go into our app controllers pages controller and then we called it the uh, update counter uh, action so we come in here we just say def update counter end and now whatever's in here is what will get fired whenever we do something so we can now come back to here this error will now be gone hopefully so we can refresh and now we'll get an undefined method for the counter and the reason is we're not signed in this is trying to call current user dot counter but we're not signed in one trick we can do aside from just logging in is adding an ampersand right here after the current user i think and then if we refresh now it'll be blank if you're not logged in but if you are logged in it'll just grab the counter so it's a little bit of a null check there of course, I would appreciate it if it would just force us to log in. And the easiest way to do that is to use the device helper method before action authenticate user. And we're just gonna force people to be authenticated for both of these actions here. Once that's done, we can now uh, refresh. It'll force us to sign in, uh, which of course will cause us to have to sign up. So we'll say dean at example.com with a password of password. And of course, because this is basic device in Rails 7, I haven't configured anything. This is going to error out. Uh, there are videos you can find on YouTube on how to fix that. We're just going to go back to the sign in page because it does create the account, just fails to sign you in when you go through the sign up link. And then we're good to go here. Once, once we have this, we can now click on this link. But of course, this link is going to have a problem because it doesn't know what to do. So let's come into our pages controller and let's tell it what to do. Now this is gonna be a two-step process. Step one, we just wanna update the counter. So we're gonna say current user dot counter. And because we set it to zero previously, we can now do a plus equals one. And then we can do a current user dot save. Once this is done, it will be saving this change. But if we come over here and we refresh, um, actually we have to come over to here and, and we refresh. Uh, if we try to click on this, it'll still tell us we don't have a template available. So we have two options. One, we can redirect to the home page here. So if we do a redirect to the root path and then we visit that page. So right now the counter is set to two. We click update. It says three, but it causes the page to have to refresh. So if I come down here and I get rid of this, if we click on this, you can see that the last thing it does is it forcibly re-renders the entire page. So it's like redirecting you there. We don't want this to have to be a redirect. We want it to happen without the page refreshing. You know, maybe there's a little canvas over here. I drew a picture and I just want to update my, my counter uh, without resetting the picture, for example. To do this, we can't do a redirect. We have to just grab something on the page and tell it that that thing on the page needs to be changed. The way we can do that is inside of our counter, we can wrap this inside of something called a turbo frame tag which is just a turbo underscore frame underscore tag for the counter. And then we'll put this in a do block and then down here we'll put it in an end. And this is the same thing as just a div that has like the ID of counter. Uh, it's just called turbo frame tag because we really just needed to name it anything else other than a, a basic div. Uh, otherwise things might be a bit more straightforward and we can't have that. So now that we have this turbo frame tag, we can come into our pages controller and we can say, hey, grab that turbo frame tag and replace what's in it with the new counter. So let's create this replacement. We can just say, uh, we can either do it in here or we could add it in a separate method. Let's maybe do it in a separate method. We'll just say uh, update counter text. That way it's really clear what we're doing. We're gonna do that down here. 
Uh, you could, of course, put this in a helper, but I don't think anyone is really following this tutorial to have super clean code for their counter button. Uh, you're mostly just following it to see what the magic words are that you need to type on the screen to make whatever feature you're trying to write uh, work. So the first thing we want to do is instead of rendering or redirecting to the root path, we want to render a turbo stream. Once we have this turbo stream render up, we then want to call turbo stream dot replace. There's also, uh, I think, dot destroy uh, and dot create maybe. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but in this case, we want to use replace and we want to replace the thing that we called the counter. Now that's what we want to replace. What do we want to replace it with? We want to replace it with the pages slash counter, and then we want to pass it something. And in this case, we'll pass it the locals, which is just going to be a set of braces with whatever we're trying to replace it with. In a lot of cases, this will just be whatever you uh, like use the first time you rendered it. And remember we're passing in the counter here. So inside of our pages controller, we also want to pass in the counter and we just grab the current user dot counter. Now you could of course add in your ampersand if you'd like to, it's not really necessary in this case because you are doing an authenticate, uh, but it's ultimately up to you. And then once all of this is done, we need to close this parentheses right here, which happens after that brace. We can go ahead and save this. We can come over here and refresh the page. And now if we uh, come down here, we can click update counter and it'll update, but it won't force a refresh. It'll just do a very quick update of this little frame. And the way we can test this is we can just hit Control T. We can come over here, go to localhost port 3000. And now if we click update in this browser, this one's not updating. If we refresh the page, this will update just fine. So the reason why this is so useful is sometimes you want the the page to preserve what you're doing. Maybe in the case of, I can even test this right now, I'll go to google.com and I start searching for Ruby on Rails. And of course it doesn't know that I'm over here trying to figure out how to make a WebSocket work uh, off the bat. It has to check the Google database or however this works. It has to pull that information and then put it down here. Now, when it tries to put it down here, we, we need it to specifically put it on my screen and not on this schmuck screen over here. And of course, every time I type a new word, I don't want it to like say, oh, you typed WebSocket, so let me just refresh the page and then put the word WebSocket in there with the suggestions. I want it to happen without that refresh. And that's where something like this helps because it only causes the little frame here to get updated uh, and everyone else is still fine. And we can take this a step further. Of course, we can go to localhost port 3000. We can sign up with john at doe.com. I'll just grab this and copy it. Password, password. We'll sign up, we'll go back. We're in the sign in page or the login page. And then we'll paste in this information. And now of course, if we update John's counter, we don't want it to replace these other counters here. But of course we can always refresh those and just see that they do in fact change. Uh, it's just not updating everyone's page at the same time. Uh, and if you're interested in you know, updating everyone else's page or any of the other cases, I will be covering those in future videos, uh, in upcoming future videos. So those are coming, those are planned. I just wanna break these up into one video at a time so that it's a bit easier for you to find what you need. Hopefully this is helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial.